Hello and welcome back to Anton Math. Now in this video we're going to go over the last type of polar graph that we're going to learn here. And let's go ahead and jump in and graph it and then we'll talk about it afterwards. Sketch r squared equals sine 2 theta. Now when I set up my reference graph for this problem I'm going to label it a little bit differently. So let's go ahead and set up our graph. We see we have a sine curve. This 2 here makes my period pi instead of 2 pi, but we don't have any other shifts or changes in amplitude. Now I still want to graph all the way to 2 pi, so we can use this for reference for my polar graph. So we go all the way to 2 pi, where this horizontal axis is my theta, but this vertical axis, I'm going to call this r squared instead of r. Okay, I'm just going to call it r squared, so we'll need to work on that a little bit later. For this problem, it won't really affect us, um, but I want to bring it up now, so if you see anything that's a little more complicated, you know how to deal with it. So let's call this center measurement pi. We'll go ahead and write in 3 pi over 2 and pi over 2. Now because my period of this sine curve is just pi, I'm going to need a couple other little reference points here. So let's write in pi over 4, 3 pi over 4. Right, I'm taking my period pi and cutting it up into chunks, uh, those five key points. I need 5 pi over 4 and 7 pi over 4 for my second period of this sine curve. Okay, and no amplitude change or vertical shift, so we're going up to 1 and down to negative 1. Now I'm going to draw this a little bit differently. It's sine, so I know I start at 0. I'm going to go up and peek out at pi over 4, come back down and hit 0 at pi over 2, but now I'm going to start dotting for this negative part. We'll talk about this in a second. I'm just going to dot this in and finish out my sine curve. So fill in there, and I'm going to dot again. So why did I dot here? Now, it's true that these dots would be a part of just the graph of sine 2 theta. The reason that I dotted them is that these dots actually aren't going to appear anywhere on my polar graph because my polar graph is r squared equals sine 2 theta. So anywhere that sine 2 theta is negative, I don't have r squared equals a negative number. In other words, these parts are not a part of my polar graph. Now, they still exist, and we'll talk about that in the next section when we talk about complex numbers, uh, but they're not going to be on my polar graph because my polar graph is a real number graph. We'll talk about complex numbers in the next section where we could do something like this, but in real numbers we want to stay away from it. So let's go ahead and take a look at our polar graph then. I'm going to set up my polar axis. We only really need a 1 on my polar axis here. And let's put some of these key points. I'm going to look at, uh, I'm going to make some reference axes here. And because we're dealing with pi over 4s, 3 pi over 4s, etc. in my reference graph, let's go ahead and draw some of that in as well. We may need to use this. Okay. And just a little reference circle so that we're drawing in the right place. Let's go ahead and make a circle of radius 1 so that we know that our r is correct when we're not at that angle 0 as well. Now drawing my graph in, it's a little bit tricky here. Uh, first thing to note, I have a 1 in front of this sign, so we're not going to really have to deal with it in this problem, but I'm looking at r squared here. So my reference graph gives me what r squared is equal to. That's not necessarily always the same thing as what r is equal to. In this case, it is. Because, I mean, it is kind of. We'll say it is kind of. I have it pi over 4, I have r squared equals 1. But if r squared equals 1, then r is also equal to 1. All right, so we have no problem. I'm going to have an r squared equal to 1. Um, as I go from 0 to pi over 4, as, as my angle, my r is going from 0 to 1 fairly quickly at first and then slows down. And as I go from pi over 4 to pi over 2, my r squared is going from 1 to 0, which means my r is also going from 1 to 0. So again, really whenever when we get into trouble here is if I have something like 
let's say I had something like 2 in here, then we'd have to be a little bit concerned, right? Uh, when I drew my reference graph, I would peek out at 2, but that means r squared equals 2. So when I draw my polar graph, I have to incorporate that because my r is not going to go all the way out to 2. It's only going to go all the way out to the positive square root of 2. r squared equals 2 means that r, which is what we're graphing, remember my polar graph isn't graphing r squared, it's graphing r, r is going to max out at root 2. So we'll do another example in some of the subsequent videos. I just want to bring it up a little bit and talk about it now when we introduce this topic. Now before I go on, um, I know that there's nothing happening in quadrant 2. From pi over 2 to pi, um, r squared doesn't equal a negative number, so I don't actually have anything over here in quadrant 2. I don't have anything in quadrant 4 either for the same reason, so I have something in quadrant 3, but notice that we have one of our symmetries here. If you look at your symmetry test notes, you'll notice that symmetry test 2 applies, which means I have reflection through the origin. And what reflection through the origin looks like, it looks a little bit like this. And remember what reflection through the origin means is, it doesn't mean that um, I'm reflecting across this line y equals negative x, that's not what it means. It means that if I have some point, say here, it's reflecting directly through the origin, through the point zero, and going the same distance to the other side. So my point up here is reflecting across this yellow line. And I'll draw a couple more of these. We're reflecting through the origin, to the other side. This is what reflection through the origin looks like. Okay, that's actually where I'm traveling is along those yellow lines. Um, it looks, in this case, it looks like I'm reflecting across this line y equals negative x, but that's not actually what's happening. Okay, so very important to keep that in mind. Let's go ahead and get rid of all our reference stuff here and see what we have. So we have this little figure eight kind of looking graph, and what we call this is we call this a lemnus gate. Okay, this is a lemnus gate. Now looking at this in general, take a look at these lemnus gates in general. In general, the graphs of the following equations are called lemnus gates, and they're always going to be these figure eight shaped curves. So we're looking at graphs of the equations r squared equals a squared sine two theta, and r squared equals a squared cosine two theta. The reason we write it in this form a squared is remember before we were saying we had one so it was easy, but if we had something like two here, we would write that as square root of 2 squared because when we put in our polar graph we're not going to go all the way out to 2 like our reference graph like, might make it seem like we're going to do we're only going to go all the way out to root 2 and like I said uh, I promise we'll see another example of a lemnus gate that does not have a coefficient of 1 in the upcoming practice videos so that we know how to handle it alright now that's it for all of our polar graphs if you feel confident with this that's the end of the material but I am gonna do a couple of um, example videos we're gonna do a few more examples of these graphs um, so you can practice it and then check it when I do it in the video alright we'll see you there